Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Fire 4 Kaiserreich. Today we are going to be playing the Patagonian Workers Front down here in Argentina. So what is my what's my plan for this series? Well, um, there is a unique name. It's not a unique tag, it's a unique name for Patagonia. If you're able to conquer all of South America, or maybe just the Spanish-speaking parts, but but it's decent chunk of South America and he's been under control, and you get a unique name for it. It's not gonna be easy. And I can tell you for a fact, it is not worth it, because I already know basically the uh, the end conditions for this. It's, it's not worth actually doing, but I think it could be a little bit interesting. So, we are starting off here. We have 29% uh, party support. Negative. We start off with negative 14% stability. Fantastic. 30% war support. We have seven divisions, mostly militia, which are... Could be worse, at least they're a... Uh, at least they're 10. They're divisible by 20, so I mean, it's okay. Um, we have one factory, a single, a naval dockyard, actually, interestingly enough. I will get my army and navy experience. You are. Do we have any trains? No. We have one train, okay. Doesn't seem super useful. Uh, we will go for technology, we have two slots. Uh, we will go for production, and I will actually go for. Uh, 1918 weapons because we don't really have any use to get construction speed early on because we don't have any uh, factories which might be an issue um, cannot modify our government national focus which is you over here the revolutionary fighters you mean war support political power faster military construction speed that's nice that'll be that'll be useful for the no civilian factories that I have we won't do you you don't do you Actually, I'm going to take the 15 trains just right away. And, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. We, are, we don't have steel to even make the convoy, but that's okay. The Revolutionary Fires. Argentina was in a state of chaos during the Build Creek, with British company exploiting its people and resources to get everything they could for the war. This led to unrest throughout the nation, but especially those in the south of the country, in Patagonia. Extremely poor working conditions brought on by the rise of socialism and syndicalism, with thousands of people refusing to work and rioting in the streets. The British forced the Argentinian government to intervene, turning rise into, re into rebellion during the events that led to the Semana Tragica. Which, definitely not even pronounce that word. The situation only escalated further and further from there, and the LP growing in strength from the main cities, particularly in Beno Area City Oligarchy. However, deep in the south of Argentina, a new type of unrest grew. With the start of a simply a simple strike of rural workers became a general strike in the south, demanding for the payment of wages that had been due for months and the improvement of working conditions. While well, the agreement was reached at first with the creation of the first world agreement of the Patagonia, when the landowners didn't keep their promises, the workers started another general strike, forcing an armed retaliation for the expedition led by Lieutenant Colonel Hector Benino Vela. The workers, trusting Valera after he helped create the first agreement, would try to negotiate with the officer, only to be met with a dreadful realization. Vela was there to demand nothing but the unconditional surrender of the strikers, and he was willing to shoot all those who opposed and kept opposed to keep control in Patagonia. Uh, we do have some leaders, though. We do have some Russian exiles. Um, usually the Russian exiles are going to be the ones that are going to eventually leave as we go. And we got Zhukov, we got Stalin, and we got Yugorov. Uh, we probably want whoever has the highest attack value. Probably go with Zhukov here. And then for our main commander, we will go with you. Draw our offensive line into Argentina. If we actually need to get a front line here first. So... Let's actually look at our starting position, because we have one supply depot in our port, and that's basically it. Argentina, they have one supply depot here, they got one supply depot here, and they all connect to Buenos Aires. So what would be nice is that we would actually want to try to connect our railroads from our capital, which is... Which is you, okay. We would want to connect our capital to this rail network. And of course, we have no civilian factories, but that's that's what we want to do. We want to kind of connect to this real network, so that our units will not run out of supplies as soon as the war begins. The Patagonian rebel, uh, The workers rally behind the future of Antonio Soto and Jose and Jose Fancon Grande Font. The sign that time for a revision with now. Despite the disarmament clause in the original rule agreement, most of Sato's are anarchist and left their weapons to Alfredo El Tusque Fonte after he and many others more radical anarchists refused the agreement. And so, Soto found himself having an ally in a Patagonian bandit in order to get himself equipment to arm the workers to fight. After the initial victories of the army, the workers dealt a decisive victory at La Anta Farm. 
And with the coronation of the FORA through telegraph lines and message runners, the second Great Patagonian Strike only grew and grew in strength. With the Argentinian army being unable to deal with it, uh, without sparking heavy political backlash in the capital for the popular UCR in power. Many years later, the fires of the revolution continued to burn in Patagonia. Chile has had to step in and protect the FOP from the north, but it still holds much sway in how the nation is run. Antonio Sato, a leader of the FORA and one of the main participants in the revolution, has led the nation ever since, leading a loose and fragile coalition of anarchist, communist, and radical socialists. Due to political instability, proper elections have not been held yet. However, Soto has promised to step down from position once the crisis in Argentina ends. Whatever the result may be, there are worries that the election won't take place in time due to the rise of Carlos in the north. People fear that the invasion will soon happen. However, with the Patagonian strike being seen, seen as a beacon of anarchism and socialism by many, uh, international support, but both by the international and willing anarchists in the exile Bolsheviks alike, not a short supply. And so the workers that may appear to be stranded in such an apparent desolate wasteland like Patagonia, may still have a chance. Okay, Prince Chris has been shot immediately. Foreign Lab has stormed Moscow. So we will be seeing a uh, national populist Russia, but that's not a big, big deal, I think, one way or the other. Again, I guess we are kind of pro-Russia. Because again, Russia is anti-Germany. But I see, well, here's the thing. In order for us to form our grand South American Union. We need to make sure that one, we have to go totalist. We need to get the communists in charge. But Chile will probably join the international at some point. So we're kind of have to be against the international and probably against the Reichspact as well. But it really depends on what Brazil ends up doing. If Brazil ends up joining the Reichspact and the Entente it does complicate things a little bit. I'm not super worried about France. They, they've so far in most of our games have done poorly uh, since No Step Back. I would say, you know, two out of three things campaigns we've done so far. They have, they have not performed up to snuff, let's just say. And the capitalist economies have collapsed. Are we get any civilian factors in this? No. Over the past few days, the works and peasants of the world have watched as the bankers, capital, and tyrants do not pause the game. Um, scramble to reap the benefits of the workers' labor from their own selfish gain. They call it Black Monday. A terrible event, they say. Um, wait. We, we, we've seen this event before. Yeah, no. Give me the political power. Actually, I think every citizen nation might get that event. But I know for sure I have read that before. And I know for sure I've never played Patagonia before. So, we get war support from you. Does not open up Eris. Gives us population. Actually, gives us stability going down by 1% as well. What are you? Big economic issues. You do give some factories. And we do, we desperately need factories for this. And then you happen after we have won the war. Okay. And again, we are going to be going for, you know, first, uh, first trade union. And then we're going to be going for the communist. We do need to be syndicalist. There's like, there's two syndicalist parties. There's two radical socialist parties. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we need to get the communist in charge. We need to get all of this stuff done. I guess we could theoretically join the Internationale. But it, it's hard to say. Right now, at least. Because, again, if we want to form that nation, I think we do need to own Chile. So we'll, we'll see where we're kind of at as we continue on here. The Hannaford idea. General uh, Mac Hannaford, an ex-army major of the Argentine Army, has been condemned for lifetime prison for seemingly betraying the reactionary Argentine military. Uh, and leaking official doc documents of Paraguay and Chile. Luckily for us, insiders of the Argentine military have indicated that he will be transported to the prison Regional de Sol, a high security prison in the territory of Nequin, which conveniently sits less than a few hundred kilometers from our border. Unexpectedly, many of the faction of the military have jumped at the chance of presenting plans to recover the would be revolutionary from a reactionary grasp. While some, may, uh, some of them are insanely optimistic, the ones that have stood out the most have been uh, proposed by. Bueno Vetra Dritti's Avengers, which suggests a uh, utilizing militia attack as a distraction for Veta Era to act as a diversion for forcing a breakthrough into the prison. In stark opposition to this plan, Comrade Yosef, it's I know it's Stalin, I just don't know how to say his last name in Georgian, in his experience has suggested us to pick up a smaller team to infiltrate the area uh, with a couple columns to stand by to assist in case the situation escalates instead of, and instead rescue the officer. Last proposal has been seriously considered, thrown in by Mark Ogler. Uh, is to simply send a column in, into the prison's general direction and let the officer in charge deal with whatever challenges lay ahead. 
each player carries his own risk, unfortunately, while Dritti and Duzgaveli's experience is bankrupt the terrorists in Spain and Russia, give them some uh, pedigree in this kind of covert operation, they're knowing that we cannot exactly commit all the resources they ask of us. By contrast, while the plan is less reliable on paper, as the column may just collapse and scatter, it certainly helps us in committing less assets that would eventually... that's essentially non-priority targets. So you do want to go for the total list. We got an 80% chance of rescued. 10% that they just refuse to even help us. Re re rescued, refuses, aborted. So, I mean, you just seem by far to be the worst option, right? So we're going to go with the totalist option. So who do we got? We got the... I mean, okay, I can't read Spanish, so it's going to be a little hard to read what uh, factions we have. So how many troops does Argentina have right now? They have one to two divisions. And we've rescued him! We got 5% work support, army experience, and we get a new general. Is he any good? He's a 2 2 3 2. So, I mean, he's okay. But, I mean, we, we, we got the war sport out of it. We got political power out of it. So, it's definitely, I think, worthwhile. I mean, our stability is still absolutely shot. We're an illegitimate republic. Yeah, I think, I think we're, uh, we can agree to disagree on that one. First International Congress. Okay, apologies for the uh, slight gap there. So, um, as we were, get some stability out of you, which is nice. We, we definitely need the stability. Political power is okay. Um, after that, we do want to... Do we go for a military factory right away? Patagonia. I mean, we, can't, we, we, need, we do need a military factory. Yeah, there's not, not even a question. Why do we even ask? Three economic issues. With the revolution having occurred in one of Argentina's most like likely places, we are now faced with some extremely some extreme economic challenges to overcome our struggle and liberating the rest of Argentina. Patagonia has been historically a largely undeveloped steppe, with occasional rural villages and fishing towns. The three economic issues as dealt by the ruling cabinet are one, a lack of naval infrastructure to both trade and oppose the Argentinian Navy in any significant capacity, two, basic lack of resource and resource infrastructure. This means that even if there were some limited reserve of iron and coal in our territory, we both lack the infrastructure to refine it into steel, as well as having the unavailable infrastructure for its transport. <clears throat> Three, the lack of industry. Uh, this one has become most apparent as we now rely on Chile for practically everything except for the most immediate supplies like food and water. Uh, we will need to solve this. Not just so that we can further bolster our combined strengths and we can stand a chance for ourselves, um, in the case that Ch uh, Chile has to pull out their support to defend themselves, if we are to survive against the reactionary government in the north, We'll need to undergo drastic changes to get men and material needed for the revolution to even survive. We must appeal to our allies abroad, get creative, and think outside the box if we wish to prevail. Okay, so I got 21 days on you. Did you give us a... No, we don't have any new things here. I'm going to turn you all off. Just, just turn all of them off, honestly. We don't, we don't want them. But you're going to give us one military factory. Which is actually pretty important. The Third International. Again, why would he ever choose this option? No idea. Like, it's just so weird there's even an option to even say no. There shouldn't even be an option to say no. And if anybody in the comments knows why would it ever be a good idea, just, just let me know. Because it's in Spain, again, we don't really care. I mean, I guess... Give me the stability. I guess if you were theoretically... Um, like, want if you knew you wanted to oppose the commune, then I guess that kind of makes sense. But I don't really know. We're gonna exploit some resources. We now actually have at least one military factory, so we're making about one singular gun a day. Very cool. I mean, of course, we can't trade. We have no factories. Okay, first Congress is over. And what your steel refining begins oil extraction and resource exploitation. You're the one that gives me a free civilian factory. Which is nice. Population survey. I mean, we do have no manpower, which is also kind of an issue. Let's get the civilian factory, and then we'll worry about our manpower issue. And we also have the resource issue. Uh, Patagonia, while large in size, is mostly underdeveloped. 
Having been taken by force from the natives during the desert campaign of 1878, Artina uh, has had a precious little time to actually develop the region. While some paramilitary or preliminary lumber camps and iron mines have been established, it's by no means working at full capacity, nor truly exploiting its resources to the fullest. Given our shortage of manpower, the revolutionary government has found no better choice than to utilize these mines and camps as provisional punishments for petty crimes against the people or the government. As such, we may have to divert manpower from our armed forces towards development projects if we wish to have any access to these resources. So you need... We have no manpower. Okay, it's actually very interesting that it only uses manpower. As opposed to... Um... Well, basically anywhere else that uses civilian factories for this kind of thing. Or just pure political power. But I do find that, uh... Find it to be a little interesting. Okay. Of course, we have no manpower. Do we get any? We get 19 per month. Not not great. We also are also on personal mobilization to begin with, which I'm very happy with that. Okay, so we have two more days left on you... And then you are, your construction speed, I'm going to tell you right now, it's complete garbage. We're going to go for population survey. At least gives us some manpower we can utilize to do our resource bonuses. That's at least my plan. Okay, support weapons, machine tools. What do we, I mean, here's the thing. We could get better rifles, but I legitimately do not think that's the best idea. Ah! Or, or is it? I mean, how expensive are you? You're 0.43. You cost... Point, so that's 0 0.07 more production. Give me the research bonus first. I think the research bonus is going to help us out a little bit more right now. Oh, because we got some development. Oh, no, not consumer good factories, whatever. Uh, you're also... Oh, you're, you're beginning this. Okay, I, I'll take it. Because, again, um... Consumer good factory doesn't matter since we have literally not a single civilian factory. And it's not like this stuff builds on its own. So... Uh, wait, it is. We have, wait, we have one factory. What the hell? Wait, no, yeah, from the event we just literally had. We will go immediately up to full trade. Because there's no reason not to. Um, especially when you have no resource in your country, free trade is literally just a boon. Okay, so the has won a majority in Italy. Got 100, 125 days, a little expensive for sure. And requires support from the native populations. In our desperate struggle for social manpower, we've largely ignored one of the ethnic makings of the nations. It's nation. It's natives. While many native groups find themselves alienated from the work, uh, work movement given their general alienation from Argentine society, Perhaps I can draw them in on common ground against the government that has been favoring them for the last half century. And maybe we can recruit our help, uh, their help, as long as we promise the grants some much needed autonomy once we are victorious. Okay, we got a 60-40. I'm, I'm hoping on that 60. But we now should be getting, yes, some manpower off of you. Playing volunteers, more manpower, but you're also like more stability loss. 18,000 manpower for free? Yeah, we kind of had to take these, right? Kind of had to take them. We can't get three more units. You're the expeditionary force. You're actually kind of garbage, to be honest. We're going to go three units here. I don't know if we'll be actually able to deploy them, but, you know, fingers crossed. But I do think, at least for right now, beginning of the revolution in place is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. My name is Anthony. If you enjoyed my thumbs up, now do a quick thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe, and goodbye.